Hello everyone, Rabbi Abe here. Question for you. Are you an idol worshiper? Well, you might not know it, because we are all likely idol worshipers, and we don't even understand what it means. But suffice to say that idol worship is blocking us from the majority of the things that we want or need in our life. Yes, idol worship. I will show you how. That's what this is about. In this week, the portion speaks about tzav, command, being commanded. In fact, Leviticus chapter 1 talks about God speaking to Moses, and he says, tzav, command Aaron and his children concerning the offerings, concerning the burnt offerings. Command them. That's what it says. What does the Zohar say? About this, let me read to you. 2,000 years old, the Zohar is to decodify the coded Bible. It says, This is what it says to prove out that command, the verse that says, command Aaron and his children, saying, Tzav zehu avoda zara. Ruach HaTum'ah. Command is idol worship, and it is the spirit, it is the force of negativity. What? Command is the force of negativity? Idol worship? What does that even mean? I mean, do we understand it? I mean, haven't we been trained, you know, some people brought up in a religious household, I know I was, and then Religion, you know, by itself didn't make any sense to me. I know many people have similar stories that couldn't relate because, you know, God should be, you know, more busy with important things instead of little old me. I mean, I'm a good person. Why will God be worried about what I'm eating or what I'm doing this, I'm doing that, not hurting anybody, you know, even having fun? So what's the problem? Tzav, idol worship, that's a problem. So l- let, me, let me explain this, okay? Because we were all, uh, again, brought up to think, well, wait a second. The basis of everything is the Ten Commandments. You know, well, you listen, you don't have to observe a lot of rules, but the Ten Commandments, you listen, don't murder. Pretty good commandment, no? According to the Zohar, it says, Nowhere does it say commandments. I mean, I never thought about it as a kid. And by the way, if you're Jewish or if you're a different religion, you probably heard that there were Ten Commandments, like all of those, right? Don't steal, don't murder, don't uh, adultery, uh, whatever else it says over there. They're commandments, aren't they? No, they're not. Not according to the Zohar. The Zohar says they are Eta tova. Good advice. What do you mean? Don't murder. It's good advice? Well, in fact, it is good advice. Because who can tell you not? To, can anyone command us to do anything? Of course not. Well, maybe you're in the army because you can be commanded to do something. If you don't do it, you'll probably end up in jail. But, you know, most people can only suggest to us. That's a good idea. You know, don't drive on a red light. That's for you. It's a good idea. Right? That's for us. Uh, A lot of things that we're probably better off not doing because maybe there's other ramifications. So maybe what the Zohar says is not so off. You know, good advice. Is it good advice not to murder? But there are a lot of murderers out there. In fact, uh, all those things that it says but people are doing it. Maybe even we're guilty of doing some of those things. You know, and, and, and it said don't. So even we went against the commandment. Why does it say command means idol worship? Why? Because, again, nobody can command us to do anything. And if the reason why we are not doing that Because the book says so, if we don't steal, because a book says so, then who's in control of me? 
the book. The book is in control of me. What, is, what does the Zohar want to tell us that command means idol worship? Let's define idol worship, shall we? Simple explanation. Idol worship is when you or I give our energy, control, power over to something outside of us and we enable it to control us. That is idol worship. Give you an example. When we become angry, we give our control of our emotional behavior at this moment to something called anger. Now, without getting into all the details about anger, anger is a force. It's a highly negative force which poisons our entire body, the liver, and I won't get into all the explanation of what the Zohar says about anger, but it's pretty bad. In other words, there's a negative effect. But we give our control over so much that sometimes if we really, really became enraged, you know, another person might say about us, you know, I don't know, they became like a different person. Yeah, that's true. Because in that moment, you did, or we did, or they did. Because all the things that the Zohar speaks about anger is that another force jumps inside. Uh, you know, again, it's so negative, I don't want to go there. A person may even need to rebuild their entire you know, spiritual, uh, whatever they've created in the immediate past because you lose a lot of stuff when you're angry. You may have a ton of energy when you're angry, but when it's done, ha, you know, it's almost like the other side is laughing at us and ha ha, see, I got you. Poisoning the body. Anyway, one of the great forms of idol worship is anger. That's what it says. Are you worried about what other people are thinking about you? And so you give them um, control over what you will say, what you won't say, because you, you're so concerned about their opinion. Or you're worried about what they might think of, be, uh, of you. You're just afraid to talk. Idol worship. Because what did you do? You made them your god in this moment. You gave them power over you. You gave them control over you. Anytime we do that, this is a form of idol worship. Anytime we give over our power, our energy, or look at it another, from another direction. When you look at something and you say, you know what, if I only had that, that will make me happy. What did you do now? You gave your happiness over to an object, a thing, a material thing, or what other people might say, you gave your power over and said, this will make me happy. This will cause me to be happy. Again, what did you do? And what if I won't have it? Now I'm miserable, right? I got to have that. Really? Why? Can you be happy without it? You know, if you, if you think you'll be happy with it, you're not ready to have it, all right? But that's a different conversation but it's a matter of giving our power, giving our energy over to something else, someone else, the environment that is going to control me, my happiness, my blessing, my power. No, that's idol worship. Another rule of idol worship. When we focus, when we focus on something that, again, we think that Focusing and doing something will be the answer. In other words, sometimes people uh, want to become healthy, as an example. So I'll give, up, I'll, I'll give up sugar and carbs. Good idea. For how long? I'm going to go work out. For how long? Now, let me ask you a question. You want to build yourself. So you go to the gym once. What do you think? Look at me now. You went to the gym once? Oh, you took supplements or you ate the right foods once? You mean you went on a diet? Diets, I'm sorry to say, a diet is idol worship. Why? Because you think the diet now will cause you to lose weight. And you know what? It probably will. 
for how long? Temporary. So you gave your power over to the diet, and the diet is now, this is running my life, the diet runs my life, and I lost my weight. And now what do you do? 99% of the time. Not all the time, just 99% of the time. You go back to exactly the way you used to eat before, and you will not only gain it back, but you will gain a little bit of interest. It has to be, because there's a little negativity that was created, that's left over. We call it klipot. It's the negative interest you get for this reactive idol worship of focusing on what you think, this is the answer to my problem. No. You know, it says in the scriptures, in the books, that what you do regularly is more important than what you do once in a while. You know, so this is meant for different things like, you know, I don't know, you know, certain times a year people become pious or even religious, whatever the religion is, if it's Easter, if it's Passover or uh, New Year, Rosh Hashanah or, uh, you know, Christmas, people can become you know, pious in a moment. Now I'm going to church. Now I'm going to my synagogue. Now I'm going to my mosque. You know, because this is the time that I'm, you know, that I, I need to, just in case, just in case there's something really going on out there, you know, God is maybe is watching, you know, because the rest of the year, not so much. But yeah, just in case there's something, that's why I call it the just in case people, just in case, let me make sure my bases are covered. Okay? <laughs> Honestly? Really? We're talking about the consciousness. We're talking about the origin of our own consciousness. And what we do, and what it's not about, oh, it's God, and I gotta please God. Really? That's what you think? Then, you know, don't watch. If that's where our head is at, you know, don't watch this video, because you, you won't relate to it. Because it's not about that. It really isn't. And therefore, it it, consistency, and that's the word. What we do regularly is most important, not what we do once in a while. And, and that you can relate back to the diet, because what will change your physique, your health, if it's about food or if it's about working out, what you do consistently. Because you take supplements once on a blue moon, zero. Because you decided today to go to the gym and, and you look in the mirror and there's no change. No. But you know, if you do it consistently, if whatever you want to do consistently, there's a greater purpose because you're looking for a greater good. You're not looking for instant results. Instant result, idol worship. And then it goes away and then there's interest payment after that. Idol worship is focus. It's limitation. It's causing limitation in our life. And that was what the Bible is trying to tell us about idol worship. These people, Egypt, you know, Egypt was all about idol worship. We're coming close to the Passover, right? Now we're in preparation already. It's exactly a month away. What was Passover about? Freedom. Oh, freedom from what? Freedom from idols. That's right. Egypt is a code word. It's not the place. It's a code word for the idol worship, meaning being trapped by all the things that keep us trapped in a focus, keep us trapped in, 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 in a limitation, in thinking, this will make me happy, and if I'll do this, I'm okay. No. Consistency in whatever we choose to do, or not, don't do it yet. Do you not ready to do it if you're not ready to be consistent? If you're not ready for a lifestyle change, don't do a diet. It doesn't help you. In fact, it might hurt you. It hurts to do something temporarily and not follow through because you also have now some interest to work off. You know, you let yourself down and you feel bad. You know, I wasn't consistent. I didn't do it all the way. I didn't take it to, you know, where I really needed to take it. And then you feel bad and you maybe you feel guilty and whatever it is. So then why did you start to begin with? Whenever you decide to make a change, and so here are the rules. When you decide to make some kind of change, make the decision to be consistent. 
or not, you're probably creating an idol. Number two, focus in life is an idol. Understand that there's one source of energy, it powers everything up. That's the, the creator force. Remember, if you have a blender in the kitchen, if you have a toaster in the kitchen, if you have a, uh, a refrigerator in the kitchen, they're all different, but they're all powered by the same electricity, the same energy. The creator force runs everything. It runs happiness. It runs respect. It runs love. It runs all of the things that we want in our life. Security, peace of mind. The force of the creator is running all of it. But we need to know how to connect to the force of the creator itself so that we can enjoy all of the effect. Love, peace of mind, security, happiness, and all the things. All the different clothing of the creator's light. Because remember, they're all powered by the same thing. So focus on the light, which is actually the opposite of focus. That's the acceptable. I mean, that's why, you know, the first uh, commandment, which is not a commandment. Again, the Zohar says it's good advice, not a commandment. But what's the first one? I am the Lord. I am the Lord, your God. What does that mean? It, it's, what, what's the, it's the most important thing. Why? Because what it's saying is there's one cause. There's one cause. It's not this. It's not that. It's not astrology. It's not that. It's not that. Those are tools. Yes, they're tools. It's not about that person being in my life. It's not about this food being in my There's one cause. What is it? The creator force. You must understand the source of everything before you can connect properly and have the right relationship to the effect. Many effects. Limitless effect. But the light itself is the source of any feeling of beneficence, any feeling of abundance, any feeling of good, all comes from one place and one source. And that's the secret of what it means. I am the Lord. You know, there's different names. I am the Lord, God, whatever. These are English names, which, okay, they're English names. There are different names that represent different levels of the creator force. One force powers everything. We need to remember that. Consistency is the key, not to focus on the effect of, of that light, of that energy, but rather on the source, on the cause itself. Learning how to make those connections with the source, of course, then, leads us in the direction of all the effects that we need in our life. But when you focus on the effect, you eliminate the rest. Yes, you might get abundance, but a lot of people get abundance, they might lose their health, God forbid. Some people focus totally on their health and they don't pay attention too much to their sustenance and to their abundance in their life or their relationships. They're too busy with other things. One acceptable focus. When you use the tool, when you're busy with connecting to the source, to the light itself, to the force itself, and the different media that enables me to connect to the source, then you must be connected with the effect. The right thing, at the right time, in the right way. That's what we're all looking for, are we not? Be blessed, everyone. And I will see you very soon in the next video. Remember Crash Course, uh, not Crash Course, but Workshop, April 7th, Removing All Negative Emotions. Go to RabbiAbe.com and you can get the information and register over there if you like. Be blessed.